Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're going to start a series on tensors by request of the viewers. A number of times a viewer had asked, can we do something about tensors? So we decided, okay, let's try it. So here we're starting with our first uh, video on tensors. And of course, it's a good place to start with the question, what is a tensor? Now a tensor is something that was invented a little over 100 years ago and it's actually a construct, a mathematical construct that enables us to represent physical entities, physical quantities that otherwise would not be able to be described. Now we have tensors of various ranks and we're already familiar with two of those. For example, we can have tensors of rank 0 and tensors of rank 1. Tensors of rank 0 are actually where are we? So they're scalars. And a scalar, of course, is something that has just a simple magnitude and no direction. So if I ask the question, how long is this object? And I tell you it's two meters long. That's just a single number describing that. There's no direction associated with that. So that's what's called a scalar and therefore a tensor of rank zero. A tensor that has rank one represents a vector. And again, vectors are very common. Most of us know what vectors are. They have a magnitude and direction, and the direction can be described as three components, one component in the x, one component in the y, and one component in the z direction. So those three combined with the magnitude give us what we call three components that describe a vector. A vector can simply be described by three components, the magnitude in the x direction, the magnitude in the y direction, and the magnitude in the z direction. So what is a tensor of rank two? Well, that's called a dyad, and most of us are not familiar with what a dyad is. But it turns out that a dyad is able to describe a physical entity where in each direction, x, y, and z, we need to describe what happens there in terms of a vector of which each vector has three components as well. So in the x direction, we need to describe perhaps a stress or a force that points in a certain direction at that location. And therefore, in the x direction, we describe what happens with a vector with three components. In the y direction, we describe what happens with a vector with three components. And in the z direction, we describe what happens with a vector with three components. So in all, three times three means we have nine components required to describe a diet. So we'll show you some examples of what that looks like, but in the meanwhile, recognize that a, a diet is simply a tensor of rank two, which requires nine components to describe it. Then we go on to a triad. Now a triad is a tensor of rank three, which means it has a magnitude and three times three times three dimensions. In other words, 27 components. Those are less commonly used, but for example, for each of the three components in the x direction, we may need to describe what happens there in terms of a vector that has three components as well. So you can see how it quickly multiplies. And it turns out that when we used Einstein's theory of relativity, that required a tensor of rank four. In other words, we have x, y, and z, the three components describing the dimension of space, and time, a fourth component, but since we had a what we call a tensor of rank four, we needed four times four times four times four, or 256 components to describe what happens in the theory of relativity, to have a physical construction to describe that theory. So you can see it can get quite complicated, but we're going to con concentrate mostly with dyads because those are the most practical and they have the most important kind of applications in science and mathematics and engineering. For example, we can use them to describe stress, elasticity, fluid mechanics, crystal structure, and so forth. And we'll show you some examples of each of those so that it makes it easier to understand what tensors are. But at least at this point, you have some vague concept of what tensors are. At least you're familiar with scalars and vectors, which are tensors of rank zero and one, and a very, very vague concept now of what dyads are, we're going to use those a lot, tensors of rank two, which require nine components to describe. We'll also show you all the rules that you need to apply tensors with, and also how to actually represent tensors, for example, triads that have 27 components. How do we deal with that? How do we represent those? And we'll show you how to do that as well. So that's our first video. More to come.